welcome back to another Unreal Engine tutorial. Today we are going to be looking into the Resident Evil camera system. Now we're going to be focusing on the camera for this tutorial, but in the future we are also going to set up an interactive crosshair as well as the spine bone bending. Alright, so in Resident Evil 2 you will notice that there's a little bit of input lag, so the character doesn't immediately turn to where he's facing. And on top of that, you can actually rotate around the character if he's not moving. Other than that, every time he's moving, you have to be stuck in the back perspective in third person. First of all, let's go ahead and create a new Unreal Engine project here. So let's go ahead and go to the third person here. I'm going to turn off the starter content. I'm going to go ahead and name it. Let's name it Resident Evil. And after that, go ahead and hit create here. Sorry if the video quality earlier looked a little off. I don't know why, but it said OBS was exporting at a lower uh, resolution than it was importing, which I don't know why the settings would flip to that. That made zero sense. But uh, let's go ahead and start off by just creating our character's camera real quick. So go ahead and type into here under uh, search assets. We're going to do third. You should get third person character. I'm just going to open that up. I think we're going to go to our viewport in the top left over here. And for now, we're actually going to go ahead and keep the camera boom and follow camera here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to set the target arm length here. We're going to do 130. We're going to set the last of the socket offset to 25 and the middle one to 50. Then what we're going to do is we're going to set the location here. We're going to do 48.5. Then all we're going to do is we're going to uncheck inherit role here. Now, clicking on our follow camera, go ahead and set the rotation here, the middle one, the Y, to negative 5. And just make sure it says that our parent socket here is the spring endpoint. Now going ahead and loading into our game, we should actually have a nice little over-the-shoulder camera here. Now back in our character, let's go ahead and head into our event graph here. Go ahead and right-click and type event begin. We're going to get event begin play. Let's drag it over into some room over here. We're going to go ahead and hold S to create a sequence, and we're going to connect it up to our event begin play. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a new function here by clicking this button. We're going to name it set camera attributes. All right, so now back in front of our sequence, we're actually going to drag off of then one, and we're going to say set camera attributes. Go ahead and open it back up. So in set camera attributes, we're gonna go ahead and drag in our camera boom here. We're gonna drag off of it and do get socket offset. There we go. We're gonna go ahead and drag off of this and we're gonna do promote to variable. Leave the name and connect it up. And then after that, we're gonna go ahead and do get player camera manager. Drag off of this and do set view pitch. We're going to do the max first. Do it again. Set view pitch. We're going to do the min here. There we go. Drag that in. Drag that in as well. And after that, we're just going to get a return node. So you can customize this around. All this is doing is saving the first socket offset, so whenever we have the camera move, it has the point that it'll return to. And then here we're going to have how far up you can look and how far down you can look. This will always be a positive value, this will always be a negative. So for the max, I'm going to do 70, and the min, I'm going to do negative 50. Now heading back to our event graph. We're, um, after doing the first event here, we're going to call the second one, which is setting up the camera. But what we actually need to do for this is we need to go ahead and do um, grabbing our character movement. We're going to get max walk speed. This is just for a future setup for another video. Drag off of this, promote to variable, and we're going to name it default walk speed. Plug it into then zero. 
we're actually going to also set our max walk speed right now. Clicking on our character movement, we're gonna go ahead and search and say max walk. And we're gonna go ahead and set that first value to 250. All right, now compile and save that. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and create a new variable here and we're gonna name it player moving. And then what we're going to do is find some more space at the, let's do the top here. Right click and do event tick. And of course, uh, towards the end of the video, I'm gonna explain absolutely everything. Hold B to create a branch. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and grab a get velocity. All right, after getting the velocity, let's drag it over here and do vector length. Drag off of this and we're gonna do a greater than plug it into the condition and let's go ahead and keep it at zero here. We're gonna drag in our player moving and we're gonna do set, copy and paste to the bottom, true and false. The top one's gonna be checked, the bottom one is unchecked. Then we're gonna drag in our character movement again. Drag off the character movement and we're gonna do orient rotation to movement, we're gonna set it. Let's make some more room here. Copy and paste exactly the same way as before. Check the bottom one and then plug the character movement in and that's it for the event tick. So go ahead and compile and save. And now we're gonna go ahead and we're actually going to do the bulk of the code here. So first of all, we're actually going to grab whenever we use the right mouse button. So we can set this up with input actions later. Uh, my input actions just tend to be really buggy, so I like to do bare bones, right mouse button, but we can set up input actions later. So we'll start with this. Um, we're gonna go ahead and type in right mouse button. We're gonna go ahead and create a new variable here, and we're gonna call it aiming. We're gonna drag it in and set it. Copy and paste to the bottom as usual. And of course, whenever we hold right mouse button, we are aiming. We're gonna grab our follow camera here and we're gonna drag out and say set relative rotation. We're gonna split the structure pin here and make more room at the bottom and top. Go ahead and plug that in and we're actually going to copy and paste again to the bottom here. So for the top one here, we're only gonna change the bottom value to four. And on the bottom value here, we're gonna change it to negative five in the middle. Now after that, we're gonna grab our camera boom, drag off of it, and we're gonna do camera rotation lag speed set. Copy and paste again. For the top one, we're gonna do zero, bottom one, we're gonna do 20. Then we're gonna go ahead and grab our character movement. Drag off of here and do set max walk speed. Drag into here. We're going to go ahead and drag off of here and do a multiply. All right. We're gonna do the bottom value as 0.5. I'm trying to make some room here. And this top value here, actually, let's move it right here. That's a lot better. This top value here, we're gonna do default walk speed. Copy and paste again. Drag in the character movement. Drag in the default walk speed. Then we're gonna drag off of this and do use control rotation yaw. We're gonna check it for the top, copy and paste. And then we're gonna do the bottom is unchecked. We're gonna go ahead and right click and do add timeline. We're gonna do a socket transition. Go ahead and plug in the top into play, the bottom into reverse. 
double click on socket transition here. We're gonna add a new track, add float track, and let's just go ahead and name it float. We're gonna set the length here. We're gonna do 0.1. All right, um, let's hit these two buttons here. Oh, that didn't do much. Um, then let's go ahead and add a key by right clicking. We're gonna change the time to zero and the value to zero. Add another key. We're gonna change the time to 0.1 and the value to one. Let's see if it'll actually do what it's supposed to do now. There we go. If you press this button, it will um, level it across the screen correctly. So that's actually it there for that. So we can go ahead and close our socket transition here and let's close set camera attribute as well. Now off of this float here, we're actually gonna drag off into a lerp. And we're just gonna copy and paste three times. We're gonna go ahead and plug in the alpha for the float for all of these. We're gonna grab our socket offset here. We're gonna get it. We're gonna right click on it um, and we're gonna do split structure pin. We're just accordingly gonna plug in the X in the A, the Y in the A, and the B into the A. Now, the values are gonna be as follows here. 75, 43, and 33. Go ahead and drag in the camera boom here. We're gonna do set socket offset. Split the structure pin here. Go ahead and plug it into update. We're gonna plug in the X, the Y, and the Z. And then go ahead and compile and save here. All right, so it turns out I actually got it a little flipped here. Over here in the event tick, we actually need to go ahead and orient the rotation to the movement and set this to false at the bottom here. So Another thing we have to do is we actually have to click on the camera boom here and we need to go ahead and type in rotation. We need to enable camera rotation lag as well. So once you do both of those, go ahead and compile and save and play your game. And you should see that the character, you can spin around the character. Um, there should be a min and max value, meaning you can only look up and down so far. Uh, you start walking and it will immediately start walking to that position. Um, you can't uh, orient around the character when you are walking and then if you hold right click it should zoom in and let you look all around as well. Um, in future videos we'll go ahead and make it to where the spine will always bend towards where you're looking and on top of that I'll show you how to implement some animations too. Basically just to sum it up at the beginning of the game here we're saving what we set our max walk speed to because later we're reducing it so we need to know what it was previously. Um, then we're setting our camera attributes we're saving the socket offset, so the beginning point of the socket, so we can move there and back, and it saves what the original position was. Our view pitch max and minimum is how far up and down we can look. Then over here, let's do our event tick. So we're getting the velocity of our character, and we're checking if it's greater than zero. So basically checking if our player is moving. If they are moving, then we set player moving to true. If they're not moving, it's false. If they are moving, we orient rotation to movement, which means basically being able to uh, not spin the camera around, uh, but we can spin the camera around if it's false. Now the big section here, checking if we're aiming or unaiming. If we are aiming, then we're gonna go ahead and set the rotation of the camera to a certain degree, uh, because naturally over here in the viewport, the camera is a little angled downward. We're just angling it up a little bit. Um, and you can see here the original negative five. So we're setting our camera rotation lag speed. When we're aiming, there is no really rotation lag, but when we are aiming, there is. Um, then we are changing our max walk speed. So this just here is saying we're multiplying the normal walk speed by half, which basically means that when we're aiming, we move half as fast. Then we're using rotation yaw, which means we can look all around in a circle. Um, when we normally cannot access being able to look up and down like that. Um, then our socket transition. So this is just letting us create an animation. These are different points here I set for where the camera will be. If you want to set your own, you just grab the camera and move it around. And then you grab what values here. Or it may be the boom, actually. It's either between the... Let's look. We can actually check that. It's with the camera boom. So 
with the camera boom you'll just move the values around uh here i believe in the camera and then you just save them and put them into uh accordingly in here and that'll move it to whatever location this is so uh we aim plays animation moves to this location we get out of aiming it reverses uh it goes back to the original position Thank you so much for watching. This is just a quick little video here to show you how to do Resident Evil style camera system. This is specifically for Resident Evil 2 I was basing it off of. Hope to seeing you in the next one.